Hello and welcome to the shop. This video is an update for the herringbone pin blank build and the herringbone pin turn videos that I did. Uh, I have some questions that people asked that I want to answer. I thought they were really good. And I have some suggestions that I want to get back to you guys. And then I want to tell you a little bit about what's going on in the shop. And if you look over my right shoulder there, you might see something leaning against the wall. I'll explain that to you in a minute. YouTuber Dave N.E. mentioned that barrel trimmers are not always the best tool for the job when trying to trim the end of a blank. And he's absolutely right. And what he was referring to, you might remember, um, I talked about barrel trimming and a little bit of chip out. So I would barrel trim a bit, add some CA, barrel trim, CA. And I did that about five or six times until I got a nice flat surface on the end of my blank. What happened, and this slipped my mind, but Robert Montgomery built me this jig. And it is incredible. It's a sanding jig for my disc sander. It's got a little guide on the bottom that fits into the slot on my sander. You basically put your tube on here and you pull it right up and you can roll it against your sanding disc and sand it down to a perfect smooth surface. And this is perpendicular, so it's 90 degrees perpendicular to my disc. So it gives me a perfect finished end every time. And I can't believe it slipped my mind and I forgot that I had this because it would have been the perfect tool for this blank. Terry Frey asked me why I chose Type Bond 2 for this project. Uh, and the main reason why is I had a wood to wood glue up and Type Bond, if that breaks, it's not gonna break at that glue joint. The wood will give before the glue joint does. Um, it's way less messy than CA. Uh, you get it on your fingers, but I can wipe it off with a damp cloth. Uh, it does not have the fumes that CA has. You'll never glue your fingers together. And I actually did use medium CA for this project. I used the medium CA to glue the tube or the barrel into the blank. So I kind of use both, but on a wood to wood glue up, uh, I like type on just a little better. Troy Campbell asked me, what's the advantage to using three quarter by three quarter blanks? Um, that really is just kind of a size I chose because the average pin blank that you buy is three quarter by three quarter by like five to five and a quarter. So I chose that as a default size, but you could have used one inch by one inch. You could have used if you know five eighths by five eighths if you really want to cut it close. That really wouldn't matter as long as your your pieces are all the same size. You don't want different sizes because it's really going to get cattywampus and it's going to make it harder to drill center. Which you remember, I had a little bit of trouble even with the three quarter by three quarter. So. As long as your blanks are the same size, no issue. You could even go two inch by two inch, put them together, make a nice tool handle um, or a bottle stopper. You know, as long as your pieces are the same size, you don't have to be particular. I just chose that out of convenience. Michael Caney asked me, do all the sides of your blank have to be perfectly square and flat? And the answer to that is the top and the bottom of every segment must be perfectly flat and at least one edge needs to be perfectly flat. The edge that you're gluing to the top of a segment. The rest of the edges, they don't matter all that much because they're gonna get turned away. Joseph Chase had a really good suggestion. He suggested buying old Scrabble games, possibly at rummage sales or resale shops, and using the tiles to make herringbone patterns, or pieces of parquet flooring. They would be about, about the perfect size as well to make some really nice herringbone uh, blanks and I think that's a great idea if you have access to those and the price is right I don't see why it wouldn't work. I broke my video into two videos building the blank and turning the pin and, and I made a comment in the first video that I didn't want the video to be 20 minutes long and Frank Ingram commented and said hey you know what's wrong with a 20 minute video TV shows are 30 minutes for a sitcom and um, the reason why I, I'm trying to break it down and I'm working really hard to get my videos smaller I explain so much that they're really long but the average watch time is between six to eight minutes. So I've got people tuning in and watching part of the video and, and just basically clicking off of it. And that doesn't really help my YouTube channel. It doesn't help my standings in the search engines with YouTube. So I'm trying to take my videos and keep the information and the detail, but bring the size down a little bit. So I've been keeping in the 12 to 15 minute range. It's working a little better, but you know, I'd like to be down maybe about 10 to 12 minutes. So Todd Cottingham made a great suggestion. He suggested cutting a piece off the end of my, two pieces actually, off the end of my aluminum angle and using them at the front and the back of the segment because I made the comment that if the clamps are too tight, it can force the 90 degree apart, which ruins your segment. If I use two pieces of aluminum angle at the front and back, I could clamp it as tight as I want it 
And as long as the aluminum didn't bend, I'm going to get a perfect 90 every time. And I think that's a great idea. I've been doing a little research. I've been out on Pinterest and out on the Internet looking for other ideas. And something like that is, is, is in the makings for me in the future because I think it's a great idea. You're going to lose a lot less blanks. J.R. Leonard asked me, what's the average amount of coats of CA glue that you put on a blank to get the glass like finished? That's a really tough question because truthfully, it depends on the blank. I probably... A minimum would be about six coats of thin and that would be on something like olive wood that takes a finish really well uh, then you move up to something like purple hearts or the walnuts or oaks that have a lot of grain and uh, I'm probably putting eight to ten coats of thin and three plus coats of medium uh, and as I put the coats on there the way I know I've got enough is I'll put a couple of three coats of medium I'll micro mesh them down and I'll look at them under the light. I'll get it right up under a light where I can look for any divots. And if I see any divots from grain marks or where the grain runs, I'll go ahead and put it back on the lathe and I'll put a couple of three more coats and sand it again. And if you don't do that when you polish, your polish will get into those divot marks. And then you got these little white speckly marks on your pen that really just makes the pen not look good. So that's a tough question to answer. I'd start off with uh, maybe six to eight coats and build from there and you'll kind of get a feel for it um, and, and the different types of wood make a huge difference uh, in how many coats I use. Make Crazy Days asked me a really a, a fun question. I talk a lot about the mandrel saver and the mandrel saver is my favorite hands down mandrel to use but he said in your most recent videos I've noticed you're using a Jacob's Chuck with a mandrel and he wanted to know why. I'm going to shoot a little bit of footage on this and kind of give you an explanation of, of what this is and why I'm using it. And uh, I think that'll be kind of a fun video. It was an interesting question. I never really thought about it, but I think I'm going to explain to you guys how this happened because this is an accident. And I'll leave it at that. I'd like to make two quick comments, just things that, that I've thought of. And, and one is, in, in the video, Building the Herringbone Blank, um, I don't know what happened. I had some comments in there, and if you watch the video and read the comments, they're off. They don't match up. When I compiled the video or compressed the video into high-definition form to upload it, my comments went haywire. So I apologize for that, but um, toward the end of the video, they started syncing back up, so it made more sense. So that was, I should have watched it before I posted it, but I kind of got in a hurry because I got in a crunch. I apologize for that, but thank you for bearing with me. There weren't too many comments, but just thought I'd mention it. In the video, I commented that I'll take a piece of maple and glue a piece of mahogany to it, and then I'll alternate and take a piece of mahogany and glue a piece of maple to it. You don't have to do that. When you assemble the blank, and if you look at the photo of the blank from the video, you'll see that there's always a 90 degree mahogany segment and a 90 degree maple segment. So it, it doesn't matter. Glue your maple to maple, glue your mahogany to your mahogany, and just have all your wood glued up, and then just alternate. You can put a piece of maple and a segment of mahogany and then a segment of walnut and just pile them on as many as you want. You don't have to mix them and it's way easier when you do same woods because you know you don't have to worry about getting mixed up. Last but not least, let's talk about this big old honking thing back here. Um, <laughs> the store that I buy my wood from finally had their 11% sale so I went out and I bought everything I needed to build my loft and the loft is in full swing. Um, I actually built the frame in the big garage, disassembled it, and brought it into this garage. This garage, my shop, is totally wrecked, so there won't be a video this week. I stopped. I was making these, these four-segmented, uh, four-piece blanks. They're on hold. Uh, my wife's bear in Tarja is on hold. Everything I've got going is on hold because I wrecked my shop. Let me show you how bad this place looks. I'll start out talking about the frame. Uh, right here used to be my lathe cabinet. I've taken that off the wall. It's down here on the floor. My actual lathe table, which used to be against the wall, everything's piled on it and I slid it out of the way. You can see my big bandsaw back there pulled out of the corner. There, there's my, my planer pulled forward. As you go this way, the drill presses in the middle of the floor. You can see the other brace for the left side of the loft. And you can see my cabinet unit and the countertop has all been pulled away from the wall. I had to disassemble all of that. So my shop is in total disarray. These will have to be put back somewhere else in the shop once I get done. But it is a total wreck. And because of this, I don't see me getting a video out this week. Thank you for joining me with this update. And thank you, everybody, for 
all the great responses. There was a lot of positive response on this herringbone video. I appreciate that. Tons of questions, uh, tons of comments. I appreciate that. I learn as much, if not more, from your comments than you probably learned from me. So please keep them coming. If you like what I'm doing, do me a favor and share it. That really helps me out when you share my videos on other forms of social media because it introduces new people to my channel and it helps me grow my channel and I greatly appreciate that. I want to thank you guys for joining me tonight. I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop. You guys come back and see me again real soon. And if you're not following me on Facebook, go to RJB Woodturner on Facebook. The link will be down in the uh, comments. And follow me because I'm posting updates on this loft and anything else that I do in the shop. So click on over to Facebook, follow me, and keep up with what's happening. Have a great evening.